Welcome back. It's still the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. We have a guest standing by for a conversation on the World Breastfeeding Week. Each year, one week is set aside globally to promote the benefits of uh, breastfeeding uh, organized by the World Alliance for Breastfeeding Action at the World Health Organization and the UNICEF. Uh, World Breastfeeding Week 2022 is being observed from Monday, uh, the 1st of August to Sunday, the 7th of August. Olua Tosin Adepojo is a public health physician based in Lagos and she joins us live uh, Zoom uh, to discuss this further looking at the significance of the week-long international observance. Good morning to you and thank you for joining us. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Right. What exactly uh, are the aims of uh, the, the World Breast uh, Feeding Week? Okay, thank you. So the breast, the World Breast Feeding Week is actually set up. The objective of it is to inform everybody so we understand the importance of breast milk as the first as the first milk to give to children. So we are here to inform people about their role in strengthening breastfeeding and also to uncover breastfeeding, breast milk actually the good nutrition to give children and also to engage organization, individual, the community to support breastfeeding. All right, fantastic. And so this is quite important. Um, you're saying this should be the first thing that a child takes. Um, I mean, this message of breastfeeding has been on for as long as I can recollect. Do you think that um, parents, you know, families, the society is accepting imbibing and practicing this message you know, that's been shared over the past decades? Sorry, come again. So are, are, mothers, are mothers really accepting this, this practice and you know, uh, carrying it out? Are they, are they adhering to you know, the messages that have been shared over the past decades on breastfeeding? Okay. So mothers are actually willing to carry out breastfeeding. But they need the support of the community. We need a community that is breastfeeding friendly. You know, the mother is interested in breastfeeding her baby, but if she has to go to work and there is no no way to breastfeed her baby, then she won't breastfeed her baby. So apart from just being willing as a mother, the mother also need the community, people everywhere to support breastfeeding. All right. Um, um, so it seems that from what you're saying that it's not uh, been totally accepted by some mothers. Uh, is, is, this, is this a case that there's some women, some mothers out there uh, who do not breastfeed their babies? Okay, so like I said earlier, a lot of mothers are willing to breastfeed their baby. However, what you need them is the environment where they find themselves. The environment where they find themselves limits them. Imagine if the father does not support breastfeeding, the woman is limited. Even if she wants to breastfeed her baby, imagine if she wants to take her child to her workplace, but there is no room where she can go to breastfeed her child. Then she's limited. So, like I said earlier, we need the support of the community of people. Imagine a woman in in the public place bring out her breast to breastfeed her baby. Some people don't look at her and just feel like, oh, madam, what are you doing in public? So we need a lot of people to accept it. So women are willing to breastfeed their babies. However, they need a supporting community to do that. Mm, okay. Uh, how, how can the community support women? You know, uh, you know is it, is it, you've talked about, you know, sometimes bringing it out and the perception of people around. Uh, in what ways can the sub community support women who are breastfeeding to make it uh, easier for them to, to do this? Okay, thank you. So the support comes first when the woman is pregnant. During antenatal care, women are supposed to be taught at their health center where they register for the antenatal care. They are supposed to be taught how to breastfeed their babies and how to, and the importance of breastfeeding. Also, during labor and delivery, they are supposed to also encourage them to also breastfeed their baby. And eventually, when they deliver the baby, they are supposed to surround them 
with people, with friends, with fathers. So it starts with the, with the husband of the woman to support breastfeeding. It starts with the friends and family to encourage her to put her baby to breast. Then even at workplaces, it is important that organizations begin to have breastfeeding rooms for their feeding mothers so that they can bring their baby to work, keep their baby in the crash, and when it is in, when it is time to breastfeed their baby, there is a room to go to to breastfeed their baby. And we also need to educate the community so everybody understands that breastfeeding is normal. So we don't see it as something strange when women breastfeed their baby in public. All right. Uh, are there some people, some women who feel that, uh, you know, they wouldn't want to breastfeed apart from, you know, not being, not, not because of society, lack of societal support, but maybe as a personal decision, they, they may not want to breastfeed. If, if that's the case, why do they take such decisions? Okay. So for women that choose not to breastfeed, the, the problem actually begins with lack of being aware of the importance of breastfeeding because they know if something is important you will definitely for a lot of women they feel that when they breastfeed their baby maybe their breast will start or maybe they think oh formula feet are actually better and they think formula feet and breast milk are the same thing so if you think formula feet will give you what your breast milk will give the baby you may choose to go for formula feet but when women understand when they are educated, every woman will choose to breastfeed their baby. But it's lack of awareness, lack of knowledge of the importance of breast milk. Hmm. So, so let's talk about that now. What are, what, what are the benefits of this, this thing called breast milk? Okay. So the benefits of breast milk. So we have benefits to the baby and we also have benefits to the mother. So, benefit to the baby includes this. Breast milk contains the appropriate nutrients that the baby needs for the first months of life. It contains the appropriate nutrients in the right proportion that the baby needs to grow and develop well. We recommend breast milk for the first six months of life because it contains what the baby needs in the right quantity and for the baby to grow properly. And secondly, breast milk contain, contains substances inside it that helps to build the baby's immune system. So it helps the baby to fight infection. So when, you, when mothers properly breastfeed their baby, they are sure that their baby is able to fight infection. Another benefit of breastfeeding is this. Studies have shown that breastfed babies, especially exclusive breastfeeding for the first six months, actually make those babies perform better at school. And also, breastfed babies, later in long, they have less risk of developing obesity and diabetes. That is for the baby. And now for the mother. Mother that breastfeed, it has been shown that it helps to reduce their risk of having ovarian cancer and breast cancer. And also it allows for bonding with two mother and baby. So these are the benefits of breast milk. All right, I mean, uh, so some people, you know, I know people who, you know, their parents gave birth to them when they were, you know, uh, past menopause. I mean, um, the, the breasts had been taken off, off by the ones that came before them. You know, maybe they are telling their family, for instance, by the time the last born came, you know, the thing was gone. And they, mm -hmm. you know that Mama was maybe 40, 42, 43, and there was nothing there in there again. And um, they gave them probably, you know, some of these baby food. But it turned out great. You know, okay. they, so they, were, they were successful. They went to school. They were smart. They passed their exams and everything. The thing is this, you know, just to, to, to emphasize on what you just said. When a woman gives birth, it's, it's, it's natural. There are some things that are prohibited in the body and all the hormones. The moment the woman gives birth, she will naturally produce breast milk. So irrespective of the number of children she has had in the past, irrespective of her age, 
the process follows a cascade the moment a woman delivers her breast production starts. So irrespective of the number of past delivery, the breast milk will always fall. Now, now that is totally amazing. That's totally, totally, totally uh, amazing. So you've talked about, uh, you know, breastfeeding the child, especially it's important, you said, in the first six months of the child's life. First six months. So is this, is this as, as a public health physician, you know, with your experience and training, is this meant to be just a breast milk, I think they call exclusive, or can, is this okay if it's done in conjunction with other baby food? Okay, thank you. For the first six months of life, the World Health Organization recommends that we should only give babies breast milk, only breast milk, no water, no breast milk substitute, nothing else. The breast milk is enough, and that's what we call exclusive. If a woman is giving a baby breast milk and water, not doing it. Mm. If the woman is giving her baby breast milk and something else, she will not be exclusive. So for the first six months of life, all the baby requires is the breast milk. And it is only if a woman gives just the breast milk for the first six months of life, we say she's practicing exclusive breast feeding. Okay. All right. And after those six months, what happens? Is the child taking off the breast milk? You know, um, or you know, can is it continued? Okay, so breast milk is recommended only for the first six months of life, after which the mother can introduce complementary feed, but still continue breastfeeding the baby up to two years. That is what is recommended. So, breast milk only for the first six months. After six months, she continues to give the baby breast milk up to two years in addition to complementary So she gets other meals that she can give her baby in addition to breast milk. So breast milk doesn't stop by the end of six months. Breast feeding continues up to two years. And why is that important to say this? It is important to continue breast feeding for babies up to two years. Because studies have shown that by two years of age, 20% of the grade is already given. So what the baby gets in the first two years of life is very, very important. So breast milk for the first six months of life, and after six months, she continues with the breast milk, she continues to breastfeed her baby, and also add complementary feed to her baby's diet. Hmm. Interesting. Um, are, are there, you talked about, you know, and it's, a, it's an interesting uh, fact of nature that uh, once a woman gives birth, you know, the milk begins to be produced and she can feed her, her child. Um, but are there, are there, it's a natural process, but are there things, foods, fruits, whatever, uh, some sort of diet or nutrition that can be taken by women to enhance the quality and the production, uh, a quantity of their breast milk? The best way to help milk production from the breast is to breastfeed. Because it's, it's a, it's, when you, the more mother breastfeed, the more the milk is produced. So, you know, we've had cases of women complaining that their breast milk is not, is not enough for their child, but they feel that the breast is not really coming out, so they don't even give it. But the truth is this, for milk, to be produced, the baby must continue to suck. So as much as baby suck, what the baby suck out is baby. So the way to make the breast to produce more milk is to continue to give the baby fresh milk. Another thing women can do is to take a little, take a lot of water. We encourage women to take a lot of water, take a lot of pap. But more importantly, is to breastfeed. Baby. If the woman complains, oh, my baby is not getting enough breast milk, continue to breastfeed. The more you breastfeed, the more the milk is being produced. So the sucking of the baby helps stimulate the brain to help produce more breast milk. 
All right. Um, let's look at some, some myths uh, surrounding this issue of breastfeeding. Some people believe it's painful. Okay, breastfeeding is not painful. Breastfeeding becomes painful when the woman not puts the baby to breast in the right So if the baby is not being put to breast in the right way, then the woman can start having pain. But if she puts the baby to breast in the right way, so that's why I said that if you ask from the continental care, mothers have to be trained are to be taught how to properly breastfeed their baby. So if she breastfeeds her baby in the proper way, then she will not have pain. Breastfeeding is not painful. Hmm. All right. Some some people say, you know, for some mothers, you know, the first few days of breastfeeding, they'll know whether it's meant for them, you know, or not. So if you get it, you can do it well in the first two or three days, then it means that it's meant for you. And if you can't get it, Maybe in the first two days or three days, it means probably it's not meant for you to, to do. What do you say to that? Well, breastfeeding is for every woman. Hmm. So it is important that mothers get into to right. And they need the support of you know the matrons, the, the, the best assistants around them to teach them. You know, it's, it's, it's women giving birth for the first time. The first time mothers are actually have to and they think oh, the baby is not taking it and not doing it the right way, so they give up. No. All right. Rather, all right. they should be taught well to breastfeed. Breastfeeding is for all mothers because it's contains the right nutrient for the baby. Okay. Uh, um, some women are shy. You know, um, they they feel that uh, you know breastfeeding in in front of people is a rude thing to do. Oh, don't. Don't do it in front of the public. It's rude. It's, it's not respectful. You know, that people shouldn't see the mother breastfeeding the child. You know, it's not a nice thing to do in the public space. So they don't breastfeed even in public. No, that was what I said earlier. We education to the community. So that we see breastfeeding as normal. And something normal can be done anyway. And everybody can support the mother to breastfeed their baby. So education to the community, to organization is needed so that mothers can be accepted to breastfeed their baby anywhere. It should not be, it should not be something to be shameful about that we are feeding the baby. No. So education is needed to the community to see it as a norm, as a normal thing to do. All right, so, but so, some people experience. Um, can you hear me, madam? Yes, okay. So, so some people get get. You talked about this issue of pain before, but I want us to go back there because some people get get sores, they get wound, you know, when they they, they breastfeed. I've even seen the cases where the baby will will bite the mother's uh, nipple, you know. So these are two things. So how, what do you say to that? Why do they get sores or they get some sort of um, uh, uh, bruise, you know, when they, they breastfeed the child frequently? Sometimes they say, oh, it's paining me. I'll stop for now. I won't do it. Let me rest for a day or two. They can't continue because of that pain. Then also, number two, why do some children bite their mother's nipple? Okay. So, in the first six months, most babies, they don't have teeth. So they cannot bite the mother's breast. You know, but as they grow older, that probably happens. So, and also, when mother complain of pain in the breast, it is because they are not putting the baby's mouth in the breast the right way. So there is a way to do it. You don't do it the right way. You may have sores, you may have cracks on your around breast. You know, so it's important that they know how to do it the right way. If a mother does it the right way, she will not have pain. And even if she has pain, it is not enough reason to stop breastfeeding her baby. You know, she can breastfeed the baby on the other breast that is not painful and still continue to breastfeed on the painful breast. Hmm. So usually, children, babies, they don't, you know, they don't bite their mother, except as they grow older. But even as they grow older, you know, it might just be 
children just it might just be children just trying to to you know to play with your parents actually. But really, most babies don't really do that. The reason for having sore and cracks most of the time is because the mother is not putting the baby to breast the right way. Okay. And not because the baby is tight. What, what is the right way? I know it may be a bit difficult for you to demonstrate because you don't have a, a, a dummy baby there, but um, what, what is the right way to put a, a, a child, a baby, for a mother put a baby to breast? Okay. So the right way to put the woman breast has the part we call the nipple. And also after the nipple, we have a part we call the areola. You know, I don't don't know any other name to call it. That's what we call it. So we have the pointed part, which is the nipple, then the other part, which is the areola. It is expected that when you put your baby to breast, that your baby's mouth surround the areola. You know, for some mothers, the only part getting to the baby's mouth is just the nipple. But no, the baby has to, has to. Also, walk around the areola. So you have to ensure that the baby, in the, 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 the breast, properly enters the baby mouth. So that by the time the baby is sucking, the baby has the nipple and the areola part of the breast in his or her mouth. Hmm. Interesting, interesting. So that, that is the area surrounding the nipple, um, if I'm not mistaken, this areola? Yes, yes. All right. area surrounding the Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you talked about, uh, you know, you said breastfeeding, it needs to be exclusive for the first six months. Then it can be supplementary, uh, with complementary uh, baby food being given to the baby from six months up to two years. Some people feel that if you give a child breast milk for till he's two years old, you're going to spoil the child. You know, you're going to spoil the child. And then... Um, it's, uh, it's, it's not a way to raise a child. Maybe after a while, before two years, you have to stop. Because if you continue that long, some even say the child may start rejecting solid food. Okay, so it's important that as mothers, when they are about to introduce compliments, they introduce it the right way and don't stop breastfeeding the baby. You know, the, 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 the babies, the child be a sport child. To breastfeed up to two years, not true. Not true. The reason why we encourage breastfeeding up to two years is so that because of the brain development, because we know the breast milk contains what the baby needs. But it's no longer enough to sustain the baby energy wise. So we say, okay, stop for that thing. So the problem comes not with breastfeeding the baby, but mothers not even knowing how. To have complementary feed to what their baby takes. So that's why most of the time the children they reject other food and all they want is breast. But if the mother, if the mothers are taught even at about six months how to properly introduce you know local foods, other meals to what they are doing, then it's going to Babies, so they won't have the, not willing to feed. Hmm. Uh, but one of the things that you know makes some some mothers, uh, breastfeeding mothers, not want to breastfeed, uh, maybe at a particular time, is because they have not cleaned, you know, washed the the nipples, and then they would say they need to wash it before they 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 breastfeed the child, and so they stay back from breastfeeding the child until they can find a way to wash the nipples. Um, is it necessary to, to wash the nipples, you know, the breast before you, you breastfeed your baby? No. Okay. Not at all? I mean, if you're a brother and you've been moving around and you're sweaty and everything, wouldn't it be advisable to, 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 to wash it, you know, before you give the it's child a... It's not a problem easy. to wash, but it's not, it's not a criteria that you must wash your, your nipple before you all right, it's quite quite interesting. So nothing should stop you. Nothing should stop mothers from breastfeeding. Okay, all right. So uh, how how many times a day should a a, a child be breastfed? Because I'm sure that uh, mothers need to rest at some point, you know, uh, from from the stress of the day and, and all of this. Uh, so how many times is it recommended? Is it every time the baby cries? 
you just put something in the mouth or you have a, a set number of times that the baby should be breastfed in a day. At demand. Wow. Time the first time the first six, at demand, yes. At demand. So as the baby demand for the breast milk, mothers should breastfeed their baby. You know, and that's why they need the community to support them, to assist them, so it's easy for them to do. Okay. Uh, we also told some people who say, you know what, it's if you if you don't get um, to you don't breastfeed your, your newborn child immediately, uh, you won't be able to, to do it. So as the child pops up, you know, the first hour after birth, you need to push your breast into the baby's mouth. Is that true? It is recommended that in the first hour of life, baby should push your breast. Okay. We encourage that. Yes. Okay, so if you don't do that within the first hour, maybe the mother is weak or she's been attended to in the hospital or something, does it mean that she won't be able to breastfeed the child again? No, 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 no. Like I said, that is what you recommend. That is what the World Health Organization recommends. But a lot of situations can arise. A woman that does have a cesarean session may not, I was put to sleep to deliver a baby, may not be able to breastfeed a baby. But the moment the mother is awake, then the mother should put the baby to rest. Hmm. What, what, what about mothers who are, who are taking medication? You know, maybe they are sick. Does this affect, affect, affect the breastfeeding? Okay. It depends on the medication. Not all medication are uh, 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 contraindicated. Some are and some are not. If the mother is taking any medication, you need to discuss that with her doctor so that they can tell her, if, oh, madam, despite taking this medication, you can still breastfeed your baby. And if she can't, then she, won't, she should look for alternatives. Okay. Finally, finally, very shortly, please, how do you wean a baby of, you know, breast, breast uh, feeding, especially for those who've Gone two years on this. On this, how do you win them very quickly, please? Okay, so you know, we start breastfeeding at birth exclusively for six months, and like I said earlier, you just give breast milk and demand and demand. But as the baby, as the child grows older, the child will take less of breast milk, so that way, you're already winning the childhood by having complementary feed. You probably won't be giving the child breast milk at demand. So this moment, the child demand for food, you give, you give, you give, you give something else. So that way, the number. All right. Seems uh, Oluwatosin Adepoju has been lost. Uh, Oluwatosin, if you're there, can you hear me? Uh, if not, we'd like to call it a day at this point. And thank you very much for. Your time, she is a public health physician based in Lagos as we celebrate World Breastfeeding Week. I think one of the takeaways uh, is that uh, she said uh, breast milk is good for the mother and also good for the baby. I didn't hear her say it's good for the father. So how about the men are listening to me this morning? It's for the mother and for the baby. All right. Thank you very much. Oh, you're there. Thank you very much. That was just uh, on the lighter note. Thank you very much for your time. Luato uh, Sandepoju. All right, and happy breastfeeding week. All right. So all the men in the studio here have been looking and laughing and swanning, even in the control room. You have to understand. <laughs> it's for the mother and for the baby. We'll be right back up next to talk about privatizations in, or privatization of public hospitals in Nigeria. The national president of the Nigerian Medical Association is our guest. <laughs>